In this video, we'll focus on solving the next part, which is the amount here. So the amount is a slightly complicated matter. And the reason why is because the amount is matched or is not yet matched with our unit price. We have now the real price of the unit. However, if we want to deduct it, how do we know the value of our stock? So right now, our quantity uh, this is the quantity, but we didn't match it yet with this. But so we need to recalculate this. But the calculation of this will be based on the average price of an apple. And what I mean by average price, let's go to purchase. So if we see product ID number one, we see here multiple prices from up to, from 20 cents up to 75 cents. Meaning we need to match up what's the average. And if you look right now, you can see here below the average is 54 cents. And that is the value we're going to use. So how do we get this value? Well, we're going to use the average function. And we're going to move this more since we have to change how we're going to do this. So the amount here, the real amount, this is the real amount. And then what we need is we need an average. So we will say here, average cost. And the average cost of apples. Let's calculate that. So we have here the sum. We have a sum if. It's exactly the same as before. And let's open up our formula builder. And what's the range? First of all, let's go here. Oh, well, we already know the criteria. So let's get the criteria. What's the criteria? Number one. Product ID one. Number two. What is the range? So let's go here to our purchasing. And then the range is this one here. Let me just get this. And finally, number three. What is the sum range? So now we have to get this as well. So the sum range is, of course, the price per unit in this section here. All right, so once we have that, we can click on done. And we know that the average cost, or at least right now, no, the total cost is this. So now we need to average this. So let's close this. I'm going to put in here a F4 to freeze the cells. Enter. And let's give this some nice layout design. And I also realized that later on we have to do this as well, matching with all of this because we have to drag this down. I, I didn't do that yet. So what we have to do now is simple. And that's the following. What we need to do here is what is the average here? So we have a sum if, and can we do this? Let's see. We're going to do an average. So we, we will nest a formula. And you can see right now the average does not work. And the reason why it does not work is very simple. It cannot count the amount of cells that we have. Yes. So if we want to count that, we cannot do a average, but we need to use another formula. And then let's slash, and we'll do now a count if. So basically what I'm saying is, all right, this is our total divide by the amount of times that, uh, that it counts apples. So there were probably like, five or six times, so it should be divided by five or six. However, we use a formula, so it will maintain dynamically. All right, so we click here again on the formula builder, and in here we say, what's the range? And what's the criteria? So we, know, we already know the criteria. The criteria is this, and next is the range. So you see the range here, and as you see the range, we can go now to the purchase, you can search here for the range. And in this case, the range is just the product ID counting the amount of times it reached the product ID, meaning that that will be every time the sale. So we are done here. And now you can see 54 cents per piece. And that is correct. So I'm going to freeze these cells, F4, and F4 here, F4 here. Oh, this is already done, sorry. So we don't have to F4 that one. So I'm going to put back the dollar sign. So here, it's this is the only part we have to put in F4 because the other was already done. So we do enter now and everything works. So next, going down, 
you can see that this doesn't work because the formula builder is open so let's close the formula builder and add this up here there you are all right so we have this now and now this amount eventually needs to be different so the, we have now the average cost per product we have the amount so what is really the price so the amount or the new price is not anymore this formula we can remove this formula now because we have this one and we know the new quantity so we can just do this what we will say is the quantity multiplied by and now we have a trick here because you can see behind the average cost we cannot click this part excel is assuming that you may want to type longer so it blocks everything behind so what you do is we just click here and then we we press up arrow up and then exactly we get the file or the cell behind the the text line here once we did this enter and you can see this is the new value this is the amount now that we have and that is exactly what it should be based on our average cost so once we have this we can now start to drag this as well so let's drag this put it everywhere and we have to check if this all here is still correctly done so let's go back here to our purchase we can see here for number two what is number two number two is oranges and we can double check here if the values are all correct so right now I see here 1937 oranges all right so then we have to search here for all the oranges that we're selling here 82 so this should be correct and the same goes here we have 1617 in stock we can see here grapes so that will be probably matched because we have the amount of grapes here number three there's about 300 going down so this is all matching so you see everything is matching up right now and now if you would add a new row here because right now we we freezing the cells but you can add up here we can just insert something and probably if you make it the formula you should extend it to far more lower so you have some more space between and every time you insert something the formula will go down as well that would be probably the best way to do it but let's try for example we have our receipt and I will say this is our receipt number 200 and our selling date is June 2018 and the product will be apples and I know the uh, let's check here what's the apples is about 200 so let's say 246 and we have one and let's see here what happens you can see now it starts to get negative of course this is not 100% possible and it should be negative however you can see we're selling more than our stock basically it should be on zero it says hey we have an issue here because there's not enough available but this is really how you can work with that and now we you start to see that we're getting gradually better in fine-tuning the tool and the things because right now you see step by step something can be fine-tuned something is incorrect it should be like an if statement from oh there are too many being sold not allowed and same of course we have here the sales tab and maybe you say wait a minute besides the sales and the purchase I have another situation imagine that you have apples that are damaged or the apples broke or they're rotten or like damaged goods or spoilage so basically we call it spoilage damaged goods or stolen goods so depending on the situation and that of course can be impacting your business as well because let's be honest sometimes you get apples they are below quality and you would like you don't want to offer them to your customer and that's how we can do in the next video we'll focus on that we call it the spoilage tab so if you like uh, all these Excel advices and you would like to apply that also in your business and you want to know even deeper and know more about bookkeeping uh, stock control invoicing just check out my Udemy courses I have a link below with multiple different courses if, about Excel on those topics